Hey everyone, Oodles here, and in this video, I'm gonna take you on a short tour of Corporate Spire, my fifth skyscraper build in my second office building. This skyscraper, built in 2020, has 12 floors, standing at 5 feet tall, and has more than 8,000 pieces. This is meant to be a companion for Corporate Plaza, my first office building. I'm not sure if I can afford the space, but if I were to expand my layout, this skyscraper would be a part of an office block with many more office buildings, but for now, we'll stick to these two buildings. And in this video, I'll explain why this is one of my tougher builds when it comes to skyscrapers. Instead of starting at the first floor for the detailed overviews, I'm going to begin with the standard floors. Part of the reason that this build has been more involved than any of my other skyscraper builds is that there are hardly any unique floors. Out of the 13 modules that I have total, only these two pairs of modules are actually identical and that is because of the cross bracing that is visible from the outside. Each floor has a section of the cross bracing that has to line up with a floor above it and below it. So no lie, I had some moments during building this that I had misaligned the brace and I had to start all over again with the floor build. But this one lines up pretty good. And you can see the cross bracing zigzag on both sides of the building. And the rest of the facade is just a simple build with black bricks and um, trans black panel pieces, similar to the corporate plaza. With that, we can start to look at the base floor, which is mainly comprised of the lobby and the rear warehouse area. The whole building is sitting on a gray 48 by 48 base plate, but the building itself has a cross section of 32 studs by 32 studs. As you can see, it's sitting on a corner lot and it has a typical wasabi district sidewalk. There is an addition of a no parking zone here since there's a fire hydrant. But otherwise the street level view is fairly simple. You have this standard lamp post and this tree which I will replace eventually. I just haven't gotten around to building more of my bigger trees as you can see here. The facade has a mixture of textures. This part of the building is done using tiles. It creates that horizontal line look. This side of the building is a mixture of just plain black bricks, trans black clear pieces, and inverted masonry bricks. And this inverted slope which starts here and will line up all the way to the fourth floor as I will explain later on in the video. The back of the building is rather simple. It's just made up of mainly light bluish gray bricks with some couple of masonry bricks here um, lined up with um, simple light fixtures to break up the monotony. And then along the rear access road you have a big door that leads to the warehouse and it opens as such. Here you have a good shot of the lobby. Again there's more horizontal lines at the back wall as well as the front desk right there. And more trans black pieces and masonry bricks line up the top walls. And the floor has some tiling pattern done using angled tile pieces which I believe were new at the time, so I had to experiment with it. You have the elevator shaft over here, and that will line up all the way to the top roof. This door over here leads to the warehouse area, which is relatively bare bones, with just some random boxes on the corner and a standing desk with a PC. The other door, leads to the stairs which leads to the second floor. I've got the second, third and fourth floors over here. These three floors had some tough alignment challenges 
particularly because of this angle with the inverted slope. Since I had to use slope bricks instead of doing crazy angle math with snot methods, I had to use this inverted slope over here, which would make these floors nine studs high because these are three studs high each, which is different from the majority of the floors, which are only eight studs high. And I'm gonna put this together now. Once put together, it does create a smooth angle overall, and it does create a nice point where that slope and the internal cross bracing converges at a point. And here it is for the first floor. So you can see that angle line up all the way to that point up top. Now we're looking at the only other floor with a fully furnished interior in this building, which is an office. It's a very basic office layout, but it packs some details. I would like to point out, as you may have seen in the other floors, that this is my only build that has an emergency staircase in all of the floors next to the elevator shaft. I guess I had a surplus of 2x4 white bricks at the time and had to use them up somehow. But generally I don't include stairs in my skyscraper builds. You have a small hallway area here which leads to the actual office space through this door. No cubicles in this workplace, but you do have two desks. So you can see the desk on the right is pretty tidy with a small bookcase even in a flower vase. The desk on the left, however, has a lot of paperwork piled up in your desk and generally needs TLC, maybe even some therapy. So are you the desk on the left? or the desk on the right? Let me know. The employees have quick access to the water cooler and the coffee machine. The latter I just did a short build video of last week, so check that out and give it a like if you actually liked it. Actually, most of the office equipment here has been featured in an earlier video back in 2020, so I will put that link in the description down below. Continuing on, this little nook here has a file cabinet, simple stuff using stock bricks. And then on the opposite side, there is a copy machine right here. In this room, it's the manager's office, nothing too fancy. The desk isn't even as big as the employees, but it's definitely more private. There's also a stack of paper in his desk, although it's much less messy than the other desk. And then you have a bigger bookshelf in the back and wait what's that on the back I guess it's for those longer nights at work yeah and before we leave this floor there is a small storage area behind the elevator shaft where there's a couple of spare water bottles for the water cooler the last module we're going to look at is the roof. It's actually a little bit tall for my setup, so I can't capture everything in one shot. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that this is the most distinct shape in the Wasabi District skyline, with its sharp chiseled top, and the antenna that makes it the second tallest skyscraper in my layout at the release of this video. There are three different angles in the four sides of the building. You have a 45 degree angle here, a 33 degree angle here, and on the back sides you have two 18 degree angles. There are pins connecting the white part of the slope to the black parts so that they're more secure, all using standard slope bricks. Like I said, I kept it simple with the angles for the most part, except for these bracings, only because I needed them with a narrower profile. These are connected using hinges. Inside the rooftop, you will see some familiar stuff, stuff that I have on my other skyscraper rooftops. It's a little bit hard to see, but you have the top of the elevator over here, some electrical panels in here, you have 
piping running along the sides and of course the uh, air conditioning units it's six studs by three studs very similar to what I have with a corporate plaza and lastly the antenna starting from the base of the floor all the way to the top it's about an additional 21 inches high all right so now I'm gonna put the entire building together I'll do it in segments here we go And that concludes the overview. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. And please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my latest stuff. Again, thanks for watching. Peace.